If you are new here, thank you so much for taking your time to join in and see what's going on on this side of the camera. Of course, if you are returning, you know my heart. It's always the same. I appreciate you and your time also. So, how's everybody doing today? I trust all is well. I'm not going to be before you long. Just want to show you my butterick wrap dress that I made but before I show you that dress let me show you what I have on um, about a, maybe close to two weeks ago I said in one of my videos that I would love to have a pair of knickers I'm like they're bringing back the culottes the gauchos the wide leg pants, you know, they're bringing it all back. I said, but no one has done any knickers. And guys, our sewing community is so beautiful that I got a couple of messages of people who had um, a knickers pattern. It was a Butterick pattern. And it's uh, Butterick 4861. Butterick 4861. And um, one of the sewing sisters reached out to me and told me she had this pattern and would love to send it to me if I wanted it. So I immediately said yes and I got the pattern in the mail. To my surprise, there are not just knickers. You have the knickers. Then you have what she's wearing, these pants. We call them gauchos. I know they're like culottes or whatever else they call them, but we call them gauchos. Then they have the wide leg pant in here also. They used to be elephant legs for us. Now they're palazzo pants and, and all of that. Anyway, I got the pattern in the mail yesterday. I already knew what fabric I was going to use. This is a gabardine, a wool gabardine. It's, it's very lightweight. It has little teeny stripes and like little plaids in it. This fabric is left over from a pantsuit that I made, but it reminds me of the fabric that the knickers in my day were made out of. So... That was like one of the best things I could have received in the mail. And here are my knickers. I was tickled the entire time that I was making them. I'm tickled because it's got the waistband and then the old style was the point just like this. I have a separate picture of it. The point, how it pointed, the band came over like two inches from the middle of the thing. It has, it's, it's just a regular zipper, but you put the little seams because it's the faux fly front. And then when you look, um, the bottom of the pants, of course, the knickers has the gathering here and then the band. And the band also has that pointed part, um, the point at the end of the band so that the knickers can button, uh, you know, to be tight enough around your legs. Now I'm just in the house, so all I have on is my knickers and a shirt. But if I wanted to go outside, which I will be going outside one day in these, I would put on um, my tights, and some shoes and keep it moving. But they're simple. I didn't do pockets, didn't do any of that. 
I just wanted the knickers and yes, I am so happy about having these knickers. I'm tickled because I was like, wow, this is definitely old school. <laughs> the way that um, they're made, of course, it's an old pattern. I think I saw 2000, I don't wanna take too, yeah, 2006. So that shows almost 20 years ago, at least what, 18 years ago, but that's how long it's been. So I don't know if anybody's going to bring this out or if one of the designers are going to recreate them, but I've got my knickers and I am a happy, happy camper for it. So I made um, not the iconic Vogue wrap dress, Vogue 2000. I haven't um, made that one yet. I'll be making that with a friend. So that hasn't come yet. But I did make Butterick 6928. Butterick 6928. Here's the line drawing. Very similar to the Vogue pattern. But I'm going to tell you, this pattern had some issues. So this is my knit. Now, as you can see, it is very drapey, very flowy. It's gorgeous. It, the fabric itself was black and it had this big flower on it, but the flower wasn't, it was at the bottom of the fabric. It was not centered. It was kind of off to the side. So you had to play with where you wanted to put your pieces. So I strategically placed my flowers where I wanted them to go. So the dress, I don't know. Let me see if I can uh, put the camera up just a little bit. Okay. So here she is in her glory of course it's the wrap now I cut originally I cut a size um, 14 and I did wait a minute, did I cut the 14 yeah I cut the size 14 because the finished garment measurement for the bust was 39 Mine is 38 and a half, and I know this is knit, but I wanted to make sure it closed properly in the front. I didn't want to have to wear a t-shirt. So my bust is 38 and a half. The 14 finished garment measurement called for a 39. The waist is a 30 and a half, and my waist is a 32, no, 33. And then hip, now the hip did say 43. My hip is only a 40. So I knew I was gonna have to play around with the sizing. The other thing I always do, normally I'm going with a size 12 in my garments, but my back from, from, my, from the neck to my waist is not as long as most of the patterns say. So even when I cut the 12, my neckline, my sleeve area, and my shoulder will be a size 10. So I will cut the neck 10. If there's a seam in the front, of course I have to grade out to that 12. I do the shoulder a 10 and leave the sleeve that way. And then under here, I have to grade out to the 12. So now I'm working with this pattern. I'm working with the size 14 and I'm thinking, okay, so you're going to just go down instead of the 10, you're going to do like a 12 with nice five eighth inch seams. This dress was too big. So. It has a dart here. Yeah, there's a there's a dart here, which it's a pretty wide dart, but I ended up having to make it wider. Um, it was just too, it was just it was just too big. The collar was laid down and was like just stay um, 
base stitched around here and then of course you had to put the facing on top of it the collar didn't fit from point to point yes i did cut my collar um the 12 since i had made the adjustments up at the top as a size 12. it really didn't fit properly now as a whole the dress is gorgeous it looks very pretty on but i had to do some workings then the sleeve i did the same thing with the sleeve cut the I cut the 12 instead of the 14. I graded the underarm out. By the time I adjusted this pattern, it's probably a size 10 or very close to it. So being a knit, I, I could have just automatically gone down to a 10, but I didn't want it tight and I definitely wanted this to work because it's a wrap, so you can always fix your hip part. It does have pockets in it. The pockets seem to be in the um, in the right place, although the seam line, the pocket seam line here and here, this is pretty long. It's actually very long. I could go in there and uh, taper it up some, close it up some, because there's a lot of space in here um it did wrap over just fine and this fits really 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 neat and i'll fix the camera so you can see the bottom of it in a moment then you turn it around so here's the sleeve and it's gathered at the sleeve now i will tell you this is a gorgeous sleeve I ran into the same problem with it being too big, even the fullness here, just, I don't know, something was going on. It just wasn't draping properly. But when I got this sleeve on, you guys know, or if you watch my channel, I don't always put the buttonholes on the sleeve. I usually just use the buttons to close it up all together, unless it's something that you have to button or some shirts were required. I didn't want to do that on here. So here is your sleeve, gorgeous. And you see, I just put a little bit of the pink because I didn't want a whole lot of flower. I didn't want a flower dress. So I just put a little bit of the pink there, the facing, the inside of the cuff has a little bit of the pink. When you turn, well, let me show you on this one, it's the same thing, but this one, um, the facing was a lot of pink and I am loving how on both sides, the pink kind of peeks through on there, but just, you just have that little bit right there. And then here's the back. You have a dark here and a dark here. Now, another adjustment I will sometimes make is in here because even though I shorten from here to here, sometimes I, I have a slight sway back. So this one, even after I had gotten everything adjusted, I put it on, this still hang really low. So I had to go in readjust this seam where I attached the bodice to the skirt. And so I probably ended up taking off about an inch and a half. And that's why I said the dress is probably really now down to a size 10. When I make it again, because I will, you know, I, I don't like to let nothing beat me. <laughs> I'm gonna get it and get it right. But plus I really do like it. When I make it again, I'm gonna try just making a size 10. Here's the belt. It just made a little skinny belt. So here's the belt here. Here's that seam line. And of course, you know, with wrap dresses, you have the tie because the dress wraps around and it looks like this. This actually is nice and smooth. It gives me a nice fit. The facing went on real nice um, and stuff. It gives me a nice fit. So I chose to have this part of the bodice the, where you could see the flower so that when it wrapped, it gave that look there. So it looks like this. Of course, this, it tied all the way around. You have the whole 
the opening in the seam where this belt comes out so that it could wrap all the way around, which it did. And then of course you have your dress. So there were a couple of issues here. Um, you don't know it looking at the dress. Now see, this is what it looks like when there's no belt, it just hangs. And I almost didn't do the tie belt because I would prefer a nice wide belt just to, you know, buckle or snap, whatever it does around the waist but i did it the way the pattern said to do it there um there are darts in the skirt so you got a skirt dart here and here and it lines up they line up so you have the seam but the darts line up perfectly with each other here's your collar you do have your collar in the back here that just folds down some of it crinkles a little bit, but that's not the pattern, that's my fabric. And so it all folds and fits over real, real neat. I do, I do really like it. Let me um, kind of show you the bottom. Hold on, give me one moment. There's the bottom. You can see what I did with that flower. I didn't let it, um, I didn't cut the whole thing when you open it up when it's wrapped properly it looks like this on the inside so a little bit of the flower on this piece then of course the dress wraps around and you got that part of the flower there and what I did with the back was put that entire flower on the back it's not centered because it wasn't centered in the fabric. I wasn't going to try to adjust it. It's actually part of the beauty of the fabric. So overall, it looks really, really nice. I think the sleeves are my favorite <laughs> and stuff. And, you know, the more I think about it, I might just... Now, I might have needed to use a more stable knit. I don't know exactly what kind of knit this is, but this is calling for a linen blend, a crepe, a jersey. You know, this is definitely not a jersey. It is a really nice length, um, a really nice length with a beautiful length, a nice knit with a beautiful um, drape, maybe. Let's see if I, hmm, this is really pretty, so, hmm, no, this one doesn't show um, what it is, it might even be a different receipt, I buy fabric so, so often, but anyway, this is my Butterick 6928. I really do like it. Would I recommend making this dress? Yes, I would. This is a gorgeous wrap dress, even so to the point that I am making it part of my evening collection because I could see some nice heels and this thing just flowing. You know, as you walk in, it's just swinging right along with you. It came out really, really, really nice. I had those struggles with it. I don't know what was going on with that pattern. However, now that I've made it the one time, um, I can tell what adjustments to make the next time. If I end up making a linen or using a linen, I wouldn't cut the 14. I would, make, I would cut the 12 and make the adjustments. I know that I'm gonna need to adjust from the neck to the waist. I always do that. I know that with my sway back, I might have to like, you kind of like curve up a little bit in the middle and then just even on out to the side. I'll have to do that, but the 12 should probably fit here and of course wrapping around here. If I choose to use another knit fabric, then I'm gonna cut the size 10 
and see how that works. But overall, it's really pretty. And like I said, I think the sleeve, especially is it this one, you know, that you really can see the underneath, um, that's probably my favorite. But I really do like it. I think um, it would be a good idea to make it. It's gonna be interesting to compare the making of this one to the making of the Vogue 2000, the Diane Von Furstenberg, because they both have the collar. Now the cuffs on that sleeve are different, but this does have a nice long cuff, a nice cuff. And then of course you have your wrap and you have your pocket. So we'll see what the difference is gonna be like. Um, but yeah, I recommend getting it. I love this fabric. Um, might even buy another piece. When I find, when I make something out of a fabric that I really, really like and I love sewing with, I buy maybe another two yards just to have in my stash or in case my somebody asks me to make this same dress. Of course, I did um, change my needle to a knit needle and I didn't use the serger. I actually made seams and then I closed all or cleaned all those seams up with the overlock stitch on my sewing machine. And that seems to have worked out pretty good. So I'm gonna enjoy my knickers. I'll be wearing them outside one day soon. I'm still just tickled about them. And then of course I do enjoy this dress. Um, you'll see me uh, well, you see it as part of my evening collection that I'll be showing um, this Thursday. I'll be doing a video. I didn't want to include it today because the knickers and this dress was enough. But after I made it, I was like, oh, yeah, this goes in the evening collection. So, again, I thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, hit that like button. Share my channel. Of course, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so. But you know how I feel. If you don't want to subscribe and you just like scrolling through and want to check out what's going on on Donna's things, I really appreciate that also. But what I do want is more than anything is ring that bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. Thank you so much. Happy sewing. Give it a try. I do think you'll like it. Bye.